In this video, I'm going to provide a list of formulas associated with linear equations. So the first one we're going to talk about is called the slope intercept form of a linear equation. In this equation, m represents the slope of the line and b is the y-intercept. Let's briefly talk about the intercepts. So let's say we have this graph. This is the x-intercept. I mean, not the x-intercept, but the x-axis. And this is the y-axis. And let's say we have a line that looks like this. Now, the point that touches the x-axis, that's going to be the x-intercept. So that's negative 3. I'm just using a random number. Let's say this is 4. 4 is the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the point or the y-value at which the graph touches the y-axis. The x-intercept is the x-value where the line touches the x-axis. So in this case, the x-intercept as an ordered pair is negative 3, 0, and the y-intercept is 0, 4. So at the x-intercept, y is 0, and at the y-intercept, x is 0. So that's how you could find it graphically. By the way, for those of you who want more examples, I'm going to be posting a few links in the description section below so you could see how to use some of these formulas. Now, for this equation, if you want to calculate the x-intercept, for the x-intercept, I'm going to call it xi, you know, just because it has less writing the x-intercept is going to be negative b over m. If you set y equal to 0 and solve for x, you're going to get negative b over m. So that's how you can find the x-intercept from this equation. Now, if you need to calculate the slope, if you have two points, you could use this formula. The slope is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. The change in y values represents the rise between two points, and the change in x values represents the run. So let's say if you have a point here and a point here, and you want to determine the slope of this line. Let's say this point is 2, comma 3, and this point is 5, 7. Well, to go from 2 to 5, along the x-axis, you need to travel 3 units. 5 minus 2 is 3. And to go from 3 to 7 across the y-axis, you need to travel up 4 units. So the rise is 4, the run is 3, which means the slope of the red line is 4 over 3. So that's how you could use the rise over run formula to determine the slope between two points. Now the next equation is called the point-slope formula of a, lim a linear equation. So this is the point-slope form. In order to write a linear equation in this form, you need two things. You need the slope, m, and you also need a point, which is x1 and y1. So notice the difference between x and x1. x is just a variable. x1 is the x-coordinate of the point. So that's all you need to know with this formula. Now the next form of a linear equation is called the standard form. And it's ax plus by is equal to c. Now, if you have an equation in this form, if you want to determine the slope, you could use this formula. The slope of the line is going to be negative a over b. The y-intercept, if you set x equal to 0 and solve for y, you'll get that y is c over b. And to get the x-intercept, by the way, if you see lowercase b, it's the same as the y-intercept. You can write this as y sub i is equal to c over b. Now, to get the x-intercept, if you set y equal to 0 and solve for x, you'll get that x is equal to c 
divided by a. So if you have a linear equation in standard form, you can get the slope, the y-intercept, and the x-intercept using those formulas. For those of you who want to derive this equation, what you can do is you can solve for y, convert this equation in slope-intercept form, and the term in front of x will be the slope. So remember, in slope-intercept form, it's y equals mx plus b. m, the number in front of x, represents the slope. So if we were to solve for y in this equation, we would have to move ax to the other side. So we would get by is equal to negative ax plus c. And then what we would do is divide everything by b. So these will cancel. And now we'll have y is equal to negative a over b times x plus c over b. So notice that this equation is now in slope-intercept form. So the number in front of x, which is m, notice that it's negative a over b. So we can see that they're equal here. b is the y-intercept, which is c over b. And that's what we have here. And to get this one, all you need to do is set y equal to 0 and solve for x. And it's going to be c divided by a. But those are the three formulas that will help you to calculate the slope, the y-intercept, and the x-intercept if you have a linear equation in standard form. By the way, for those of you who want a printed formula sheet, with these equations, feel free to check out the links in the description section below. Now the next one is an uncommon form of a linear equation. I'm not sure if you heard of this, but it's called the intercept form. Not the slope intercept form, but the intercept form of a linear equation. And it looks like this. It's x over a plus y over b is equal to 1. Notice that I didn't use capital A and capital B. The reason is because lowercase b represents the y-intercept. So if you have a linear equation in this form, this has to be 1. It can't be anything else. a is equal to the x-intercept. b is equal to the y-intercept. And the slope is simply negative b over a. Keep in mind, the slope is the change in y divided by the change in x. So it's fitting that it's going to be negative b over a. So that's the intercept form of a linear equation. Now, when you have two lines, let's say these lines are parallel. Let's call this line 1, line 2. So line 1 is parallel to line 2. What you need to know is that parallel lines, they have the same slope. So the slope of line 1 is equal to the slope of line 2. Now, let's say this is line 1, and line 2 meets line 1 at a 90 degree angle. Line 1 is perpendicular to line 2. So when dealing with perpendicular lines, you need to know that the slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. So m1 is going to be equal to negative 1 over m2. So for instance, let's say l1 has a slope of positive 3 over 5. L2, the slope is going to be negative, but it's going to be the reciprocal of that fraction. So it's going to be negative 5 over 3. So that would be an example of calculating the slope of a line that's perpendicular to another line. Now, when dealing with horizontal lines, 
a horizontal line always have a slope of zero. And the equation of a horizontal line is going to be y equals k, where k is some number. When dealing with vertical lines, the slope is undefined. And the equation is going to be x equal to h, where h is some number. So I'll give you an example. Let's say we have this graph. And let's say we have a vertical line here. What is the equation of that vertical line? Notice that it touches the point x equals 3. So it's always at x equals 3. Over here, x is still 3. Over here, x is 3. So it's always x equals 3. So that's why I have the equation x equals h. A vertical line will always be x equals some number. Now for a horizontal line, it's going to be y is equal to some number. So notice that this line touches, it has a y-intercept of 2. So this horizontal line is just going to be y equals 2. So for horizontal lines, it's y equals k, where k is some number. You just have to find where it touches the y-axis. And for vertical lines, it's x equals h. h is basically the x-intercept, which is in this case 3.